What's up guys, I'm Kel, Red Zone, MTG, and today I have another Oathbreaker deck tech for you. Today's video features Sarkin Unbroken and his signature spell, Guided Passage. Now this deck has actually been one of the hardest for me to fine tune and get it to a place where I was really happy with it. It's gone through several iterations and I'll talk about those at the end of the video if you'd like to hear about them. But uh, without further ado, let's start talking about the cards here. We have Sarkin Unbroken here as our Oathbreaker. He's actually one of my favorite Planeswalkers in MTG lore. I really like Sarkin. He's kind of like this torn character, obsessed with dragons, broken by Nicol Bolas, and now he is unbroken. He's also one of the only three color planeswalkers, which makes him pretty unique for Oathbreaker. So he has four starting loyalty, he costs two of any and a teamer, so a green, a blue, and a red. He has a plus one of draw a card, then add one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's pretty good. Drawing cards and ramping is kind of everything you want to do in a multiplayer format. He has a minus two of put a 4-4 red dragon token onto the battlefield. And has a minus eight of search your library for any number of dragon cards. Put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. That's pretty ridiculous. We're actually going to be using all three of these abilities for this deck. And that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a deck that really focuses on our Oathbreaker's abilities rather than just making kind of like a generic mid-rangey deck like my first iteration was. The signature spell, Guided Passage, is a pretty classic teamer card in my opinion. For a blue, a red, and a green, you reveal all of the cards in your library. Then an opponent chooses from among them a creature card, a land, and a non-creature non-land, and you get all of those cards in your hand and you shuffle your library. So you get three cards from this, and I love signature spells that kind of refill me. So we can, you know, spend a lot of our turns ramping out Sarkin, using our removal to clean up the board, and then once we have Sarkin, we can refill our hand with Guided Passage. And basically all of the creatures in our deck are excellent, so getting any one of them is really good. The lands, you know, kind of whatever, but a non-creature non-land, usually they'll just give you like another ramp spell or maybe um, you know, Mana Rock or something like that, but it's still pretty good filling up your hands. A lot of our cards are versatile, so it doesn't really matter what we get as long as we just get something. And also keep in mind Sarkin's plus one of drawing card and then adding one mana. Um, I really like one drops in this deck because you can immediately, you know, plus one Sarkin when you play him and then drop something from your hand, which is really, really good. And also, you know, dragons. We have no shortage of dragons in our deck. We really care about four fours for a couple cards. So keep all that in mind as we start talking about the rest of the deck. First up, we have some card advantage cards, starting off with Mystic Remora. This is an enchantment for one blue, like I said, really like the one drops. It has cumulative upkeep of one mana of any color, which means the turn after you play this, you have to pay one or you sack it. And then the turn after that, you pay two. And the turn after that, you pay three and so on and so forth. It's still really, really good. Even if you can get this for two turns, it's, it's really good because it says whenever target opponent successfully casts a non-creature spell, you know, like a Planeswalker or a signature spell or ramp or whatever, you may draw a card. That player may pay four to counter this effect. Yeah, almost no one's going to do that. So you just basically pay one mana and draw a bunch of cards. It's pretty good. Speaking of which, one man drawing a bunch of cards, Treasure Cruise. Once again, like I said, I like the one mana. And it's one mana because it has a delve, so you can remove cards in your graveyard from the game and then reduce the colorless cost here. And it's just draw three cards. Treasure Cruise is a classic. Next up, we have Greater Good, a card that I think is fantastic in this deck. It's an enchantment for two of any double green. Sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power but then you have to discard three cards. Well, guess what? Almost every single creature in our deck has more than three power, including the tokens that Sarkin creates. So we kind of net in this. And we, you know, get to dump a lot of stuff into our graveyard. So, you know, it makes Treasure Cruise a little bit better. I think Greater Good is fantastic and um, a really, really good inclusion into this particular deck. And then we also run Future Sight, one of my favorite cards from high school. Uh, it is cost two of any, triple blue. It's an enchantment that says, play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play the top card of your library, so if you can get a lot of low drops, and we do kind of have a good number of low drops in the deck, then you can cycle through a lot of cards and have like really big turns, which makes this very, very good. Next up, let's talk about our removal package, as you can see here, and once again, one drops I think are fantastic in this deck. So starting off is a Lightning Bolt. It's Lightning Bolt, three damage to anything. Fantastic, play Sarkin, play Lightning Bolt, remove something, remove something that could possibly, you know, kill Sarkin. Yeah, great card. Next up, Chain Lightning. Same kind of deal. Just one mana, three damage. Fantastic. Flame Slash. One mana, four damage, but only to a creature. Really, really good at removing creatures. Kill your opponents like Tarmogoy for whatever other medium-sized creature they have. 
Next up, Mizium Mortars. Two mana, deal four damage to a creature you don't control. So not as good of a rate as the Flame Slash, but it has Overload. So for three of any and triple red, deals four damage to all of your opponent's creatures. So pretty good board wipe for us. Next is Subterranean Tremors. This is one of the ones that I ended up including in the deck more recently. It is a sorcery for X and a red, and it says Subterranean Tremors deals X damage to each creature without flying. If X is four or more, destroy all artifacts. And if X is eight or more, you get to create an 8-8 red lizard. Pretty sweet. You know, clear the board. A lot of our dudes have flying, so it doesn't really hit most of our guys. You know, we got a lot of dragons. Blow up all the artifacts. We don't have a whole lot of artifacts in the deck either. And sometimes you also just get an 8-8. Really, really good. Next is Nature's Claim. For a single green, destroy an artifact or enchantment. Its controller gains for life, and we really don't care about that because we're going to be hitting them for a lot of damage. We have really big dragons in the deck, so, you know, them gaining four is not that big of a deal. And just for a single green, once again, I like the one drops in the deck. And then also we have Cinder Vines. I think this card is painfully underrated. Fantastic enchantment. For a red and a green, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, this card deals one damage to that player. Very, very cool. But you can also sack it and destroy an artifact or enchantment, and then it deals two damage to that permanence controller. So it's, you know, removal, and it also punishes, you know, Oathbreakers and signature spells and a lot of stuff. So Cinder Vines. I think if you're playing uh, Gruul Colors, you should probably run this in your deck. Next up, we have our ramp, starting off with Curse of Opulence. Fantastic enchantment for a single red. Enchant player. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a colorless artifact token named Gold. It has Sack It, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. So you enchant a player and then encourages everyone to attack that specific player. And uh, whenever they get attacked, you get some gold which is really, really good, and, you know, you're going to probably need a lot of gold. I think Curse of Opulence is just, once again, a, a really, really good card, Windmill Slam, in most red decks, in my opinion. Next is Farseek, Sorcery for one of any and a green. Search your library for a Plains, Island, Swamp, or Mountain, put it onto the battlefield tapped. So basically, search your deck for any non-forest and slap it on the battlefield tapped. Really good mana fixing. Very similarly, we have Kodama's Reach and Cultivate. These are Commander Classics. Search your deck for two basic lands. One goes in your hand, the other goes onto the battlefield tapped. Just, you know, staples in my opinion. Dragon's Horde. This is a pretty unique one to the deck. Uh, it's a artifact for three. It's also one of the only artifacts. Uh, when a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on this card. You can tap it and remove a gold counter to draw a card, or you can just tap it and add one mana of any color. Yeah, really solid. Draws cards, ramps us. Like I said at the start, everything we want to do. And then finally, we have Solemn Simulacrum. When it ETBs, you get to search your deck for a basic land, comes into play tap. When it dies, you draw a card, another commander classic, and pretty good in Oathbreaker. And before we get to the dragons, I want to cover a couple miscellaneous cards, and there's there's more than a couple here. Starting off with Kiora, Behemoth Beckoner. Three drop, seven loyalty planeswalker for two of any, and a blue or a green. Whenever a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card, and you know, Sarkin kind of creates four four dragon tokens. So anytime, you know, our Sarkin creates a dragon, we get to draw a card, and we get to draw cards from, you know, a lot of our other dragons as well. It also has a minus one of untapped target permanent, which is pretty good. We don't have a lot of cards that add multiple mana to our mana pool, which is, you know, the best use for this. But it's still pretty good in our deck. Very similar to Kiora, we have Teamer Ascendancy. This is an enchantment for a green, a blue, and a red. Creatures you control have haste, which is excellent for doing Sarkin's ultimate. But it also says whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So like I said, very close to Kiora. Very excellent for the same reasons that Kiora is. But also, our guys all have haste, which is, is actually really, really good. Next up, we have Dragon Tempest. Once again, speaking of the last card, very, very similar. Dragon Tempest is an enchantment for one of any and a red. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under our control, it gains haste until end of turn. And, you know, basically all of our dudes have flying. And it also says whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target creature or player where X is the number of dragons you control. We're not going to be dealing, like, a really high amount of damage, but, you know, it hits creatures or players. So it, it's still really useful and giving all of our guys haste, like I said, with the Ascendancy is quite good. Speaking of which, Lightning Greaves. Equipped creature has haste and shroud. Equip zero, two drop equipment. Just really, really solid. Next is Prophet of Crufix because Prophet is not banned in Oathbreaker. It is a 2-3 human wizard for three of any, a green and a blue. It has two abilities. The first one is you get to untap all creatures and lands you control during each other player's untapped step. 
and it says you may cast creature cards as though they had flash. So basically, we get to untap all of our lands every single turn, and we can just kind of sandbag our creatures until we really need them, playing them at the end of the last opponent's turn, kind of giving them pseudo haste. Prophet is, you know, it's, it's really good. It's not as good as in Commander, because it's kind of a slow card being five mana and all, but it's still pretty good, especially in a big splashy deck like this. And then finally, we have Doubling Season. This card is an all-star for the deck, as you would expect. It is a five drop enchantment for four of any and a green. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many tokens. If an effect would put one or more counters on a permanent you control, it puts twice that many counters. So basically what that means is anytime we create a token, we get two tokens and our tokens tend to be pretty big. And also whenever we play a Planeswalker, they come in with double that number of counters, which lets us immediately ultimate Sark and Unbroken when we play him if we have doubling season on the field, searching our library for any number of dragons, slapping them right into play. If they have haste from something like Teamer Ascendancy, you basically just win the game, and a couple of the dragons have really, really good enter the battlefield effects. So doubling season, an all-star for this deck, I would call it a win condition. You know, if you can play doubling season and then immediately play Sarkin afterwards, or maybe the next turn if somehow this survives, then you just kind of win. So it's a good way of winning without kind of souring the table, I suppose. You know, you're not doing any infinite combos or anything, but it's still very, very, very powerful. And finally, we have our dragons, or cards that make dragons. I've kind of saved the best for last here. We have Dragon Master Outcast. This is a one drop. Once again, man, really like the one drops. Human Shaman, it's a one one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control six or more lands, put a five five red dragon creature token onto the battlefield. And this is one of the reasons why we're running a lot of land ramp as opposed to artifact ramp. Also, we're running some stuff that blows up all artifacts, so we kind of don't want a non bow with that. And I like the land ramp in general. So, yeah, each turn you get a five five if you have six or more lands, and that's not too hard to do with this deck, and uh, yeah, great, great card, um, just great synergy for the deck. Next up we have Sarkin the Dragon Speaker. This is a 4-4 four, four Sarkin for three of any double red. He has a plus one where he just turns into a 4-4 four, four red dragon with flying and indestructible and haste, which is pretty good. So, he, you know, think of this Planeswalker as a 4-4 four, four flying haste indestructible dragon, but he can also uh, minus three and deal four damage to a creature. And then he also has a minus six, which we can get because we are running doubling season. And it says, you get an emblem with, at the beginning of your draw step, draw two additional cards, which sounds pretty sweet, but at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. So we get two additional cards, but we have to pitch our hand every single turn. It's kind of a glass cannon type ability. I don't do it all that often. I just like him as a 4-4 flying indestructible haster that also just kills stuff. It's, it's pretty versatile in my opinion. Next up, we have Sarkin the Masterless, the last Planeswalker we have in the deck. This is a five loyalty Sarkin for three of any double red. It says, whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, each dragon you control deals one damage to that creature. So if you have at least two dragons on the field, he makes it so like your opponent can't attack you with like, you know, X twos, they just die. He also has a plus one where it says, until end of turn, each Planeswalker you control becomes a four, four, red dragon creature and gains flying. So you turn like, I don't know, your uh, Oathbreaker into a dragon or Kiora into a dragon, which is pretty funny. And he also minus three, create a four, four red dragon. And now we have the actual dragon starting off with Thunderbreak Regent. This is a four, four flying dragon for two of any double red. He kind of punishes our opponents for trying to mess with our dragons. Whatever a dragon you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls, uh, he deals three damage to that player. So pretty good, just bolts them anytime they try to target any of our dragons. Next up we have Territorial Hellkite. This is a 6-5-4-4 four, four with flying and haste. Pretty crazy, but it also says at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose an opponent at random that it didn't attack during the last combat. It attacks that player this combat if able. If you can't choose an opponent this way, you tap him. So in a multiplayer game, it's really good. You know, if you just have two opponents, he'll attack one and then attack the other and then attack one. In a single player game, not quite as good, but it's lucky that Oathbreaker is a multiplayer format. Next up, we have some of the best dragons with Glorybringer. This is a 4-4 flying haste for three of any, double red. You may exert it as it attacks. If you do, it does four damage to target non-dragon creature and opponent controls. Just 
you know, smash them for four and kill one of their guys. It's, uh, you know, it's Glorybringer. Next is Thundermaw Hellkite. This is a 5-5 Flying Haste Dragon for three of any and a double red. And when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each creature with flying your opponent's control. And then you get to tap all those creatures, which is really good. Just kind of paves the way to smash in with your big dragons. Getting this off of Sarkin's ultimate is just, it's just so backbreaking. Next up, we have Storm Breath Dragon. This is a 4-4 Flying Haste Protection from White for 3 of any and a double red. It also has Monstrosity, so for 5 of any and double red, you can put 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on him, which is pretty crazy. And then it says, um, when it becomes monstrous, it deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of cards in that player's hand. We don't really care about the Monstrosity all that much. It, it can come up every now and then if it's really late game and you have a ton of mana. But 4-4, four, four, Flying Haste, Protection from White, and there's a lot of white removal, you know, Swords to Plowshares, Path to Exile. He's pretty resilient. I really like all of our dragons to either have haste, be really efficient, or to affect the board in some way, like Steel Hellkite. This is a artifact creature dragon, 5-5 five, five, for 6 of any. You can pay 2 and give him plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn, and you can pay X and destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to X, whose controller was dealt combat damage by Steel Hellkite this turn. You can only activate this ability once per turn. So you smack your opponent with Steel Hellkite, you pay, I don't know, four and blow up all of their four drops. Once again, a Commander Classic and a really, really good include into this deck, being able to clean up pesky permanents. Next, we have Balefire Dragon, 6-6 six, six flying for five of any double red. When he hits your opponent in combat, he deals that much damage to each creature that player controls. So just basically kill their whole board if he hits them. It just pretty crazy. Next we have Dragonlord Atarka. I love this card. It's a flying trample 8-8 eight, eight for 5 of any, a red and a green. When Dragonlord Atarka enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage divided as you choose among any number of target creature and or planeswalkers your opponents control. And you know, it's also just kind of an 8-8 eight, eight flying trample. And then finally we have Bogardin Hellkite. It's pretty similar to Atarka. It's a 5-5 five, five flying with flash for six of any double red. When it enters the battlefield, it deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or players. So imagine, if you will, having doubling season on the field, ultimating Sarkin Unbroken, getting, you know, Bargain of Hellkite, Dragonlord Atarka, you know, I don't know, maybe a couple of the uh, hasty dragons. That's, that's basically game over. You know, wipe a player's board, especially if you have, um, the Thundermaw Hellkite come into play, tap all of their flyers and just, you just, just basically win. It's not always that easy, but it's it's super sweet when it does work. And then we had our land, starting off with Forge of Heroes. If you've seen any number of my other Oathbreaker videos, you know I kind of put this in every single Oathbreaker deck. I think it's fantastic. Getting to put an additional counter on your Oathbreaker when it enters the battlefield is quite good. Next we have Haven of the Spirit Dragon, a card very, very good for this deck for pretty obvious reasons. You could tap it to add one colorless, or you could tap it to add one mana of any color, but you have to use that to play a dragon. And you can pay two and tap it and sack it and just get any dragon or Ugin from your graveyard to your hand. Just, I mean, obvious include in my opinion. Command Tower, another obvious include. Frontier Bivouac, this is our on-color Tri-Land, obvious include. We also have our three Shocklands. We have our three Pain Lands. We have Fiery Islet from Modern Horizon. You know, you get sack it, draw a card, pretty good. Grove of the Burn Willows, this is kind of like the opposite of the Pain Lands, but, you know, it's Grove of the Burn Willows, really, really good. Spire Garden, the Battle Bond Land for our deck. What's the, the one for in the colors for our deck? We have some of the Czech Lands, Hinterland Harbor and Sulphur Falls. Cascade Bluffs is the Red Blue Filter Land, and then we got Snow Covered Forest, got a couple of these. A Snow Covered Island, because we're not actually running a whole lot of blue, and some Snow Covered Mountains. I do have equal number forests and mountains, because while we have a lot of Red cards in the deck, a lot of them are high drops, and we need a lot of early, you know, green mana so we can actually, you know, ramp, play our ramp spells. All right, guys, so that was my Sarkin Unbroken Guided Passage Oathbreaker deck. Before I end the video, I did want to show you guys a couple cards that I initially had in the deck that I have cut, or different takes that I took. So the first take for this deck was kind of a teamer mid-range deck, kind of focusing on four power creatures. You know, Savage Knuckleblade is the best example, but I had a bunch of other ones too. I had like Yasova Dragon Claw, I had Surak Dragon Claw, just kind of like a, a teamer style deck. But I decided to go with dragons and kind of focus on, you know, all of Sarkin as opposed to just the fact that he was teamer. 
I wanted to focus on the dragons a little bit more because you know, he's Sarkin. He loves his dragons. And also I had Sarkin's Triumph, which is a tutor for dragons. You know, you get to search your deck for a dragon, put it in your hand. But I found that it didn't really work with this kind of flavor for the deck because we're only running about like nine or ten dragons and it doesn't really matter what dragon we have as long as we have one. And stuff like, you know, Guide His Passage is going to get us a dragon anyway but also get us some other stuff. So I found that this card wasn't as useful in this version of the deck. And then I also had the Savage Ventmaw Hellkite Charger combo as well. What this is, is Savage Ventmaw is a six drop. It has flying as a four four. When it attacks, you add three red and three green mana to your mana pool. And that mana stays through your phases until end of turn. And then Hellkite Charger is a five five flying haste. And when it attacks, you can pay five and double red if you do you un untap all your guys and you get another attack phase. So what you can do is you can get almost infinite attack steps by, you know, attacking, adding the mana, putting it into him and then paying an additional mana because it only adds six here and you need seven total. Um, so you, all you need is one additional mana to attack again and then untap and then attack again. And you can get like a whole bunch of attacks just for a single mana. I had this in the deck, but I kind of cut it for some more fair stuff. I think it's a totally viable option if you really want to put it in. And these cards really aren't expensive, so it's a really good, like, cheap win con if you don't have doubling season and you have something like Sarkin's Triumph, so you can kind of, like, tutor for these kind of combo-y dudes. And then also I had a Tarkus Command. I just kind of felt it didn't do as much in the deck as I wanted it to. Still really good. Um, and then I had some more dragons that added, like, tokens, like Utvar Hellkite, Lathless, and Nesting Dragon. Once again, I kind of cut these to be... I wanted my dragons to be more efficient, I guess you can say. Also, I think Niv-Mizzet's pretty good. Probably one of the best dragons, but he didn't really fit into this kind of theme. And then also I had the Skargan Hellkite. I just like the other, you know, 4-4 flying Hasters a little bit better than this guy. And then I had the Talismans as well. And I chose to cut these for the land ramp for the reasons I explained earlier. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. It really, really helps a lot. Stay tuned for some more Oathbreaker and possibly Commander content coming up in the near future. I'll see you guys later.